I gotta get something off my chest. This is really bothering me. What monkey wants to get picked up? I can't sleep after I pitch. Learned a lot about samurai. That was fun. Like, why do you think it's happening? I feel like my attitude today was disrespectful to the game of baseball and the other people that were there playing. Today sucks. It's about the worst possible day you can have as a pitcher. Uh, yesterday we scored five runs in a game that I pitched and we lost because we gave up seven in the first two innings and didn't make it to the third. Can't really do anything today to try to get better because it's just a recovery day. So you just have to sit here and wallow in the depression. Oh, that should have just hit me in the head. That would have put me out of my misery. The depression is definitely setting in. At least it's sunny. That's the only positive thing. If it was raining today, would really suck. Hello, how are you doing? Good. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel today? Hello. Good. All good. <laughs> yeah. Basically just threw a bullpen yesterday, so I wish I was more sore because that would mean I would have thrown longer in the game. <laughs> all good, all healthy. <laughs> Slept for like six hours. Fell asleep at like 3.30. I can't sleep after I pitch. I need to get rid of my depression first. Give myself 24 hours. Like, why do you think it's happening? Like, what am I doing wrong? I see your stuff is there. So like tipping pitches or like... One thing I can say for sure is they're afraid of you. They don't seem very afraid in the box. They seem very comfortable. It's not easy to relax when you're the worst pitcher in the league. <laughs> so when he says they try to do small stuff, like I hear that phrase, small things, small stuff. Literally, like, what does that mean? I'm sure I'm like not thinking about this right, but it seems like from the conversation, it's like, okay, but like, I don't know what else to throw other than, do I just throw like, because Sasaki's good, he throws hard. Also, Yamamoto throws hard. I'll just have to go watch them pitch, I guess, and try to learn from them. I have a 24 hour rule, which is basically I get 24 hours to be miserable and feel the pain of having a shitty start. I don't think it's realistic to just come in the next day and be positive and like, oh, okay, I'll be fine and everything will be good. Like, I think you should probably feel some pain after pitching like shit. And then once I am out of that 24 hour period, I move on. So I still need to get something done today, even though I feel like shit and I just want to sit in darkness and like do nothing and not see anyone, but none of that is healthy. So, but uh, hopefully it's helpful for some of the kids out there or some of the other players out there to watch the vlogs to know that like even the best players in the world have bad outings and have self-doubt, think that we suck. All the same feelings that you have, we have those too. Now on days like this, when you feel like doing nothing, it's really important to have data. Lower body readiness, yellow, but upper body readiness, green, and CNS score, green, which means that there's no excuse for not lifting to my true potential. Last week I was lifting 315 at uh, 0.63 to 0.67 on the gym wear. Today that's my target, is to be there or slightly above. For three reps, average bar speed. Okay, average there was uh, 0.72. That's above where I was last week. That's good. So same thing goes for squats. Last week, 315 at uh, between 0.46 and 0.49. So 315 at 0.5 today is the goal. 315 at 0.55, okay. Well, my 24 hours of feeling like a worthless human being are over, so it's time to get better. So tonight I'll be watching about two hours of footage of Yamamoto from the Buffaloes, back-to-back -back Sawamura Award winner. Obviously one of the best pitchers here in Japan, and he throws mid to upper 90s with a splitter, curveball, and a cutter, from what I can tell. Pretty similar to my arsenal. Tomorrow I'll probably study Sasaki. He throws a little harder than I do, obviously. Hopefully have a better idea of what sequences work here, because clearly the ones that I'm throwing right now aren't working. Day one of anti-depression routine. I'm gonna double the dose of vitamin D and go for a walk in the morning to get some sunlight and some exercise. I'm gonna eat some good food, which means I'm headed to Bubby's. And then we're gonna talk to some friends. Hi, Chalupa. Hi, vlog. Are you excited for Pokemon night coming up? So stoked. I even have an outfit. And then go have a good day at the field. Hi, -o. Hi -o. Yeah, I get so rattled when it's like stretch on your own. Like everybody goes all over the field. I'm like, wait, I'm like, I now just look like a loner. <laughs> out here on my own. I just don't want to be caught in center when it starts pouring and I have to run inside. How do you say rain in Japanese? Ame. Ame? Ame, yes. A-M-E. I'm actually in a good mood today, surprisingly. Mecha ame. Mecha ame. Many, many, many rains. Why are you picking up Japanese? Mecha ame. Hey, mecha ame. Mecha ame. Oh, good? Oh. Mecha ame, yeah. <laughs> I need water. <clears throat> After studying Tyra and Yamamoto and Sasaki, definitely have some stuff that I can work on, some patterns that I picked up on. So you need to have catcher set up at the front edge of the plate, like the glove, like right at the front edge of the plate. <sighs> okay, is that here or there? Like here, 
Okay, so it needs to be lower. So that's here. That was built. Okay, so it needs to be lower. I want him to set the glove like where the ball needs to end up. Okay. Above that. So that's the highest. Too much. You have him call a left-handed hitter. One ball. Two balls. Three balls. That's two up though, right? You said like two, three balls. Yeah. Okay, give me uh, one split, one curve. Yeah, I guess the one thing that I'm a little shaky on is that really depends on who's hitting. So then you still have to think about what, which one has the highest probability. Who's looking for something in as long as you locate it away. You have high strikeout rates. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Show me the monkeys. Where are the monkeys? Monkeys, monkeys, monkeys. We got a 20 minute walk to the monkeys up these stairs. We found a monkey. Monkey. I need to get my camera out and take some pictures. There's monkeys everywhere. Monkey, monkey, monkey. What monkey wants to get picked up? That's the question. Oh, this guy does. Look, he's coming right towards us. Breaking news just in. Trevor Bauer has been captured by a gang of monkeys. Sources say he saw them coming right at him. This is Kevin Chan with Lift Small Bunt the Ball News. Hey, buddy. It's crazy. These monkeys are trained well enough that uh, they tell them to sit and they sit. So these are wild monkeys, but they uh, are trained, I guess. They uh, are cool to be around humans, and you can uh, buy some food and feed them. We got a mom and a little baby over here. Look at this baby, like, climbing on her feet. Apples and peanuts. Apparently, uh, peanuts are the more sought-after commodity here. These guys have quite the appetite. They're just shoveling food in their mouths. These monkeys are spoiled. Look at this. Humans exist to feed the monkeys. That's uh, that's what they're telling us right here. Oh, fist bump? I said the, uh, that baby is like one week old, which is pretty crazy. I guess at the end of the day, they just call the monkeys and then all the monkeys follow them. Look at all these monkeys. There's probably like 50 monkeys. And when they started calling, all the monkeys just up and left. And I've never seen anything like that where the monkeys just, wild monkeys just pay attention to humans. And you wanna do it on the camera? I don't think I can't, but you just, you wanted me. So I guess I have to, I'm gonna get stuck. Oh gosh. I literally can't fit, I'm stuck. <laughs> Your boy's too fat. That's your fault for programming my uh, my lifting, Andy. If you weren't so good at your job and getting me jacked, I would have gone down that slide. Hey, how often do you think the monkeys come down here and play on the playground? You think monkeys go down that slide? It is my first trip back to the Tokyo Dome since 2009, when I was inspired to play in Japan in the first place. Hello, Hello Ryu. Oh boy, so I need to get all the way in the back. Okay, what's going on? Okay, let's go see the facilities here. Yeah. <laughs> this is our weight room. We have a little rope that uh, blocks the hallway off from our from our weight room. Same cage that I remember. Um, I remember throwing a bullpen here on these mounts. So this bullpen is underneath the stadium. You can see the stands actually right above here. I remember watching like Drew Pomeranz throw a pen here and Garrett Cole and uh, throwing a pen here myself. So pretty nostalgic memories, pretty cool. The lockers are good. This is what they look like. I remember playing here in 2009 and a couple of teammates of mine, specifically Michael Choice. A lot of you don't know who Michael Choice is, but uh, he was hitting balls that were hitting right up here. It was crazy. I mean, we were in college and he was hitting absolute moon shots that were hitting off of this deck right here. <laughs> now, apparently last year, Tokyo Giants redid the scoreboard and you can see it's absolutely massive. When I was here, this whole, all the signage and stuff went all the way around except for the batter's eye in the center, but it's pretty cool. I can't wait to see them fire this thing up and uh, put some graphics up there. All right, so for the bullpen today, we are working on throwing some fastballs down in the zone and then splits below that. That's one of the sequences that I learned from watching Yamamoto. Also working on throwing some backdoor breaking balls, cutters and sliders for the arm side. Curveball's good, movements and everything is good, velocity's good. I always want to find something that I can work on, but that's the goal. One of the things I uh, definitely miss about baseball in the States is before every game, I can go out and uh, sign for the fans and interact with them. Here, it's very rare that I'm actually in the stadium when fans are in the stadium to interact. So I definitely miss that about American baseball. All right, time to get this uh, hallway lift in. Pretty short lift today, and the purpose is to move fast, get the body primed for the next start. Yeah, just trying to get as much out of it as I can. 
Today I'm off to Kyoto, which is a two and a half hour Shinkansen ride, bullet train ride. Um, I'm on my own, basically no interpreter. So I gotta figure out how to do this myself. Welcome, please select a ticket type. So it doesn't take credit cards, so I have to use cash. I hope I have enough cash to get back. Uh, from Shin Yokohama to Kyoto. 8.31, this one, ordinary seat. Yep, uh, least occupied car eight. Oh no, maybe go to what? Probably not gonna be any better. Maybe 10, nope, brutal. Uh, well we could do like- No seats together. Oh, across the aisle, I'm 10, okay. Uh, well you guys sit across from each other. I'll go for 7B. This is uh, oh gosh. So I got five tickets here. Two of these are receipts, so I don't think I need those. One of these is a return ticket from Kyoto to Yokohama. So I think these other two are the ones that I need, and I'm hoping it allows me through. How many did you put in? Two? So you have to put like, oh, did it let you? Nope, oh. So, all right, let me try. Two tickets. Okay, his work. Mine works. Oh no, poor Natasha. <laughs> nice. I did, nice. I did different. <laughs> Now, if we can make it to our platform in time, we might make the train. This is going great. I think we're doing great. Wait, so we're not on the right place? Oh, that was to Tokyo? Yeah. How did we misread this sign? Something didn't look right about the platform being empty. We should have just checked. Uh, we're car 10, yeah. Yeah, this is us. That's car eight. Okay. Go ahead. Easy money. We got it. Made it. After two hours on the train, we have made it to, where are we? We have made it to Kyoto. Uh, we didn't talk at all on the train about what we wanted to see, so. <laughs> Wait, which way did I, did I go this way? Uh -huh. I did it. First thing we're checking out is a ninja and samurai museum. Apparently they have an experience where you can use an actual samurai sword. I don't know if we're gonna be able to or not. It's probably like sold out. Probably had to make reservations ahead of time. It's a super cool little street. I'm getting distracted. Too many cool things around here. Uh, I think it's this way. I think we found it. And you will throw ninja stars and uh, you will be a samurai costume. 25 minutes till uh, samurai experience. So we need to find some like the equivalent of street tacos, something quick. Gyoza, this has got to be the street for it. This is such a touristy place, but it's like it's still been, super cool. Like Wagyu loin and U.S. rib. That looks pretty good. Should we, uh... Tastier than crab. Yeah. Is it tofu crab? Crab legs like that? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. but cake and crab legs? Yeah. I'm not sure I trust the technology. I had abalone the other day. You can't, you can't get it in the States. They have to like import it or something because it's illegal to like get it in California. Oh, is this like squid on a skewer? We just gotta pick something. The Nishiki Market is one of the biggest food markets in the world, I'm being told. I mean, this guy's cooking with a torch, so this has gotta be our spot. Got shrimp, squid, scallops on a skewer. In the States, if I saw someone on the side of the road cooking fish, um, I would be a little bit concerned. But uh, here, I'm not concerned at all. I got though. Andy had a good point. It'd be a really good hour to just walk down and like sample something from each of these shops. Probably gonna have to come back and do that at some point in the future. Okay, first up for me is the scallops. The scallop is incredible. Let's try the uh, squid. Not quite as good as the scallop. Scallop's definitely my favorite. Andy is hoarding my shrimp right now. Thank you. Cooked perfectly. I would definitely recommend this. I would go back there as soon as we're done with our ninja thing. Yeah, fun fact about trash cans. They don't really have public trash cans. Everyone's supposed to carry their trash back home. I think I'd love to have armor like that. I'm not sure if I saw someone walking towards me dressed like that on the battlefield that I'd be super scared. But back in the samurai days, I'm sure that was quite intimidating. Hopefully we'll learn about that on the tour. You will hear that ninjas actually used to be farmers, fishermen. That's why many of the weapons look like farming tools. Some enemies chasing after me and running, and I throw this, like this, and make a sound. So enemies think, oh, he went that way, and I run in the other direction. Samurais were allowed to have a horse, ninjas were not. On the mission, they had to run a lot. People say they run like 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers a day. We're about to learn how to throw ninja stars and pull plastic, so can't hurt myself. Okay, right hand, please to show left foot. <laughs> See it, Andy. Let's see your technique. So, Almost in the bullseye. Maybe. Apparently you're better at hitting the target than throwing. Three, two, one, go! We haven't, we haven't been close to the target. I'm gonna use the excuse that uh, I'm holding the camera. Go! Maybe that's my problem. I can't hit the target. Bad command. Velo is good, it's sticking. One, go! 
down four points with one throw left. One, one, two. Learned a lot about samurai, that was fun. Samurai swords are curved, so it's easier to draw in a sheath. A mustache would run the armor so that you could look a little bit more intimidating. Yeah, and also because uh, women could also be samurai, they wanted to disguise the gender of the person wearing the armor. So, I don't know, a little history lesson for sure. Cool vibe for a stadium. Uh, some nice music, it's very relaxed, birds chirping. Let's take a peek at the field. Well, it's not our practice right now, so I can't go out there, but I'll show you the field in a bit when it's our practice. Don't know how the mound is or the bullpen or anything like that, but we'll find out here in a bit. This is what the dugout looks like. Lots of seats, which is nice. Oh, we got some bleachers down here. Those are cool. Thought I was gonna get a hit in the head there with the foul ball. At 122 to center, at 96 down the lines. Probably get up like seven home runs today. Be good. Get zero outs. If I can do better than that, I'll consider it a success. Now, some of you in America might be familiar with the 40-man roster, the big league roster. But in case you're not, I'll give you a brief rundown. If you're on the 40-man roster, you can be optioned up and down to the big leagues. If you're not, then when you get sent down to the minors, you have to be DFA, designated for assignment. Lots of complicated rules on that front. Here in Japan, we don't have any of that. There's one uh, active major league roster. You can go up and down between like the minor league team at any time. You just have to spend 10 days down in the minor leagues. There's also no injury list here, uh, which is interesting. If someone gets injured, they just get basically sent down to rehab. A couple little cultural differences between NPB and MLB. I gotta get something off my chest. This is really bothering me. This notion that I was sent down to the minor leagues and sent on a uh, adjustment start is just plain wrong. What actually happened is there's a rain out and the rotation got shuffled, which means I was gonna have 11 days in between pitching. Since I'm not here to throw bullpens, I asked the team if I could pitch in between. Their original plan was to have me throw bullpens to stay with the big league team so I could get ready for my next start. I decided I wanted to pitch. So I went to the minor leagues and I pitched a game to stay sharp for my next out. I don't care about getting criticized in the media, but at least just fucking get it right. Long day. Six innings, 97 pitches. I was up to 98 on the velocity. Ten strikeouts, no walks. First guy of the game hit a home run. Not surprising. They had eight hits on 14 balls in play, so I continue to have the worst batted ball luck in probably the world. For context, a 300 average on balls in play is actually like above league average. So overall successful day. First two innings, I was not myself. Had a really negative attitude today. I owe the people there at the game an apology. I owe my teammates an apology. The other team an apology because I feel like my attitude today was disrespectful to the game of baseball and the other people that were there playing and expecting the best out of me and the people that showed up. So I'm sorry. I don't make that mistake very often and waste days that I could be getting better and have a negative attitude. So if you're there and you're watching this, I promise if you come watch me pitch again, I will, I will be better.